So, what other um, shrinkage methods you think we can come up with? Each of beta is so close, right? So we, we imposed a L2 norm on the betas, L2 constraint on the beta. You can impose any other yeah, norm constraint on the betas, right? I can I can impose an L4 norm, or more commonly, I can impose a L1 norm. Right? It's called it's called lasso, right? So lasso is essentially So, just the norm of the, the absolute value of the betas, you sum up those and you want to keep them. So, you can write the same, you can write the constraint formulation where I can say sum of beta has to be less than some t, right? Sum of mod beta has to be less than some t, or I could just do this kind of a formulation, right? And so, to impose a constraint on each individual beta would require you to know something about the variables themselves beforehand, right? Otherwise, if you constrain a very important variable to have a small coefficient, then it becomes a problem. So, you need to know something about the variables and you can say, okay, I know that these variables are very important, make sure that the other variables do not amount to more than 0.5 times the coefficient of these variables or something like that. You can think of all kinds of complex constraints uh, once you have knowledge about the system, but typically you do not, right. In such cases, you will have to have some kind of uniform constraints like this. And uh, so, this is a very, very popular constraint. Uh, it actually makes life harder for us, right? So it doesn't have such a nice closed form solution anymore. Why? I mean, this is no longer differentiable, right? So I can't, I can't write your uh, nice closed form solution like this. In fact, I have to work very hard to solve this. Okay? I mean, there are packets. I mean, you don't have to work very hard. I mean, I'm just telling. You, typically, so uh, uh, so you can just run it on R or Vika or something. You can always run Lasso on it. It'll give you the nice fit. So what's the nice thing about Lasso? I will try to give you an intuition about it. So, think of it this way. So, uh, suppose I have a non important coefficient, okay. So, if I can reduce it from say a 1000 to 0.3, okay. Uh, well, let us not even look at it that way. So, I, I can reduce uh, some coefficient from say 1000 to 999, okay, right. And there is another coefficient which I can reduce from, let us say, so there are many variables in my fit. There is one variable whose coefficient I can reduce from 1000 to 999. There is another variable whose coefficient is 1, I can reduce it from 1 to 0, okay. And both of them cause the same change in my squared error, okay. Both of them contribute equally to the squared error and making this change will make the same change to the squared error. So, which one would lasso, which one would rich regression prefer to reduce? 1000 to 999, because that causes a much larger reduction in the squared penalty, right. Which one would lasso prefer to reduce? Doesn't matter either one, but then I can make this uh, thing slightly more uh, contrived. 
right? Now we go. Which one would Lasso prefer? Right? So even though this is a absolute values, this is a larger reduction, Rich would prefer still prefer 1000 to 999, right? Because the fall is 1.1 squared to 0 squared versus 1000 squared to 999 squared, right? Still that is a larger reduction in error, right? So what is the take home message here? Lasso is more likely to drive coefficients to 0 than Ridge. So Ridge would happily leave the coefficient at 1.1. Right? Or even more dramatically, it will happily leave coefficients at 0 0.3, 0 0.2, 0 0.8. So it will leave it at small values, it will not drive it all the way to 0. Okay? Well, Lasso, given an opportunity, right, will drive the coefficients to 0. I mean, it will not do it 0, drive it to 0 at the cost of minimizing the error. Right? It will still try to minimize the error, right? but uh, given a chance, it will more likely to drive coefficients to 0. Okay. So, in sometimes lasso is also called sparse regression right? because this L1 norm constraint is also called a sparsity constraint because it makes your beta vector more will have to have more zeros. Right? So, if you, know, you know what a sparse matrix is, right? so you have a matrix with a lot of zero entries in it and only few non-zero entries you call the matrix a sparse matrix. So people worked with sparse matrices, right? Some of you have worked with sparse matrices. So you really do not want to have an array representing a sparse matrix because most of the entries are 0. So typically what you do in a sparse matrix representation is you store the index of the non-zero entry and the non-zero entry. Okay, that actually takes a lot less memory than actually having a large m by n array with lots of 0. So that is why it is called sparse. Uh, things. So, here uh, the L1 regression has a tendency to make the beta sparse, okay? it will have a lot of 0. So, it is sometimes called a sparsity constraint. If you have coefficients less than 1, nine, one and 0, mm. that case that will be better than this one. Coefficients less than 1, all the coefficients are less than 1 you mean? I think 1.1 1 .1 and 0 you take, yeah. in the other case as 0.1 and 0 or something like that. Yeah. In that case when you square it will become lesser. Yeah. So the grid will become better than that. No, no. See, if I if I take point zero one, point one, and I square it, okay, and the difference between that squared and zero squared is lesser so than point one and zero. So no, 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 you're, no, no. So, but the drop in the value, yeah, will be bigger in the lasso than in ridge. Okay. Now it depends on what other competing uh, elements that you have. Well, yes. Lasso is better than rich in all cases. No, lasso is typically drives the coefficients to zero, while rich doesn't. This is, I, I was giving you an intuition as to why that is the case, right? It's not a mathematically a sound argument, but you can give a mathematically sound argument also that uh, lasso is more likely to find sparse fits than rich regression. Okay, so I'm being very careful. I'm be careful. So, I mean, I can also think of a geometric intuition for it. So, if you think about the uh, right, the lasso constraints will be something like this, right? And you think about ridge constraints. That's supposed to be a circle, okay? So, the ridge constraint will be something like this, right? So, here, if you remember, the sum has to be a constant. Right, so the, the sum has to be a constant, and the sum of squares has to be a constant. So one will be a circle, the other one will be a thing. So when you are looking at the the error surface corresponding to this, right? So essentially, you will have to find solutions that lie on this, or lie within this for ridge. I mean, for lasso, and lie within this for ridge. Okay, and it turns out that you are more likely to hit a corner. Of you can show that more formally that you are more likely to hit a corner of the in, in the in the lasso case, and in the ridge case you are you are likely to hit. I mean, so the probability of hitting something because this is the whole thing is convex. The probability of hitting that side is higher, right? So we can. This is just the job, the very rough intuition. I don't want to get into showing things formally, but you can show that the probability that lasso will give you these kinds of corners 
in the fitter corner obviously you can see that has one of the coefficients of 0 right so that you will get a corner as a fit is much higher than uh, you will uh, get one of these uh, uh, axis points in the ridge okay um, so okay. in fact you can think of having higher order uh, penalty also okay you can like i said you can think of an l4 norm penalty right and uh, you can even think of so so far we looked at two methods for variance reduction so one was subset selection okay the other one was shrinkage based methods okay now there is another third class of methods which people use uh, for getting better fits uh, with uh, possibly fewer uh, um, variables or fewer parameters uh, this is based on based on derived input directions. So, we have talked about uh, reducing the number of variables so far, right? but in both of the uh, I mean at least in the subset selection part, we retain some of the variables and then we ignore some of the other variables. right? Likewise, whether we are doing implicit uh, subset selection by doing lasso or ridge regression, we are reducing the coefficients of some variables and retaining some other variables, right? but at all points we were operating with the original set of basis vectors that were given to you right so what were the basis vectors we are talking about here what are the basis vectors you are talking about here huh? the columns of the x matrix right the columns of the x matrix are the basis vector so we are working with the original basis vectors we are working with the same columns that were given to us right we in one case we picked some columns and threw out some of the other columns in the other case we tried to continuously adjust the weights of the column so that some of them were given more weight and some were given less weight. So, when we talk about derived input directions now I am not going to stick with the original columns okay I am going to find a new set of columns right I am going to find a new set of features new set of directions right which I will then use for doing my regression okay. So, we actually talked a little bit about it in the when we do looked at the orthogonalization right I told you when you do orthogonalization essentially what you are doing is you are finding an orthogonal basis for the in, input uh, input space and then you are uh, trying to find the coefficients there. So, likewise what we will do here is uh, right. Um, So, we will reduce the dimensions okay as I, I put it in quotes I will explain why uh, and then we will also orthogonalize the dimensions okay. So, what is the advantage of orthogonalizing the dimension? Huh? We could do univariate regression on each dimension separately okay and then that will give us the coefficients okay. So, we do not have to actually do a multivariate regression okay we can do univariate regression on each dimension because once I orthogonalize the directions they do not interfere with one another right. So, I can do, do univariate regression. So, typically when I try to do this derived input directions I try to orthogonalize the directions okay and I also try to find a reduced set of dimensions that will give me the, the original fit or as close to the original fit as possible. 